Hi, this is Shridhi Joshi and today I am going to talk about transtibial gate deviation. Let's see. First is knee flexion during stance phase. So what are the deviation during knee flexion and stance phase? Either it will be excessive knee flexion or it will be inadequate knee flexion. So how to remember this? What is the common cause for this? So first common cause for this is quadricep weakness and remember too far, too hard, high heel. So first too far means socket is aligned too far anteriorly. Too hard means plantar flexion bumper is hard. High heel means heel is high. Common cause is quadricep weakness. So let's see here the gait. In this gait, we can notice that due to anteriorly aligned socket, patient is having excessive knee flexion during the stance phase. Let's see what happens when the excessive anterior displacement of the socket. In this diagram, we can notice that the excessive anterior displacement of the socket. So, this is the plumb line. It is uh, right one and and the, this is the force of action line which is posterior to the foot. So because of this the line is uh, line the uh, socket is close to the line of action and the forces is transmitted this is the forces it will transmit it through the socket to the end and back of the foot. We can notice with this black line. Again remember that plantar flexion bumper is too hard means it will limit your plantar flexion and if your stiff cushion or stiff plantar flexor bumper then amputees may flex their knee more than normal which allow the sole of foot to reach the floor. When overly stiff cushion or bumper is there and it is not absorbing the impact of heel striking on the floor so it will tend to produce abrupt excessive knee flexion means if your uh, stiff cushion or bumper is there it's not absorbed the impact of heel strike and it lead to the excessive knee flexion remember if the patient is having uh, knee flexion contracture so there will be tight posterior tissues and do not permit the full accession, uh, ex extension. So because of that, there will be excessive flexion of your knee. Let's see uh, knee flexion during stance phase and there is inadequate knee flexion. So how we can remember this? Earlier we have seen this too far, too hard, high heel for excessive flexion. If it is inadequate, too far, too soft, low, uh, low heel. It is exactly opposite. Most common cause is quadricep weakness or contracture. So if socket is aligned too far, posteriorly soft, too soft plantar flexor bumper or low heel, anterolateral discomfort or contracture on weak quads. So let's see here the gait of that patient. Here in this diagram we can see that there is inadequate knee flexion because their socket is aligned too far posteriorly. So because of this there is inadequate knee flexion. Let's is see there. here if the socket is placed too far posteriorly so what happens? In this diagram we can notice that the socket is aligned or displaced too far posteriorly. So there is excessive pain and pressure at the patellar tendon area and the posterior distal areas. So patient is having pain here and here. And posterior instability is also there. Because the line of force transmission, we can see that this is line of force trans, uh, this is plumb line and the line of force transmission is uh, very back to the socket. So it is a line of transmission through socket falls posteriorly on the floor reaction. And that's why the processes will tend to rotate backward. 
and there will be hyper extension of your knee rather than flexion and this is the reason why patient is having inadequate knee flexion during stance phase remember if the plantar flexion bumper is too soft so what happens there will be uh, momentarily delay between heel strike and initiation of knee flexion so when your knee is begin to flex after the cushion is fully compressed and that's why if a single axis ankle is there and excessively soft plantar flexion bumper is there so it will allow the prosthetic foot to plantar flex too rapidly so if plantar flexion is occur too rapidly so there will be like this sound is there this is the slap sound on the floor is there and that's why there is abrupt contact on the floor and there is a decrease in knee flexion range and there, this is the main cause of a inadequate knee flexion so next we can see that the weak quadricep if quadricep is not working during heel strike so Uh, there is ex uh, your limb is going uh, go to the extension and that's why inadequate knee flexion is there normally the quadricep is working at heel strike eccentrically to control the limb loading and prevent excessive knee flexion during heel strike so if weak quadricep is there then knee will go for extension prior to the heel strike and that's why there is a reduced knee flexion so we can see that the weak quadricep is also decrease your knee flexion let's see the thrust at mid stance in transtibial gait deviation so what is thrust first of all the thrust is sudden violent push in specific direction so how would you remember this remember just limousine the limousine car so if the patient is having medial thrust means mo so foot is outside too much in this diagram we can see that our medial displacement or medial thrust is there so your foot is displaced too much medially or thrust is at medially so what happens then there will be excessive pressure and pain in the lateral proximal area and the distal medial area lateral uh, lateral area and the proximal distal uh, distal areas so here we can see that if the supporting force or supporting foot is too far medially aligned then the line of forces this line of forces is transmitted through the socket and gap to the medial side and laterally pressure and that's why the in order to prevent the lateral thrust your foot is outset too much here we can see that your foot is outset too much and thrust at medial stance so this is normal person video but we can see the medial thrust see the patient is walking and the medially how the leg is going in thrust at mid stance we are going to see about the lateral thrust so what happens in lateral thrust as we have seen that thrust means sudden violent push so if the lateral thrust is there li means foot is inset too much lateral for l and i means inset too much let's see in this diagram here we can see that the lateral displacement or lateral thrust is there so because of this here we can see that the proximal area that there, there will be pressure on medial side and gap on lateral side and the distal areas Uh, laterally there will be pain so excessive pressure and pain in medial proximal area and lateral distal areas so here lateral instability will be there 
so if the process is is rotated around the amputated limb because of lateral displacement of the socket and socket brim is pressed against the femoral condyle while lateral part there is gap medial part is pressure so because of this the plumb line is laterally and foot is inset too much and because of uh, this lateral thrust is uh, fairly common but if it is excessive the amputee may complain the uncomfortable pain on the medial uh, proximal area of the knee and there will be lig ligament damage will also there so it is again a problem for that in last video we have seen that how patient's leg go medially same way it will go laterally so like this way you guys can remember limousine car l i m o if lateral thrust is there meant foot is inset too much if medial thrust is there then foot is outset too much let's see about the knee flexion it led stance transtibial gait deviation so what is most common cause for it there is knee flexion contracture is most common cause for knee flexion at stance phase either it will be premature knee flexion or it will be delayed so how to remember this first remember bump soft means dorsiflexion bumper is too soft it lead to excessive dorsiflexion of your foot case means keel is too short or socket is aligned too far forward let's see the gait deviation in this gait deviation we can see that the excessive dorsiflexion is there because the patient is having excessive dorsiflexion bumper soft let's see premature knee flexion or drop off so just prior to heel off during normal gait cycle knee is going for extension but at heel off or immediately thereafter if we remember the initial contract heel strike foot flat mid stance heel off and toe off and after toe off again uh, for toe off we need knee flexion little bit of knee flexion is there so uh, we need that and this knee flexion is coincide with passing the center of gravity over the metatarsophalangeal joints if body weight is carry over by this joint soon means mtp joint soon then there is a lack of anterior support and because of this there is earlier or premature uh, knee flexion will occur if socket is aligned too forward here we can see that socket is aligned too forward then center of gravity must move forward to pass over this prosthetic equivalent of mtp and that's why it will allow premature knee flexion so patient will complain that having feel problem like of something and they will tell that it is only in downhill walking and excessive pressure at the postero proximal area they will notice because your socket is aligned forward excessive pressure at the postero proximal area and that's why premature knee flexion at the knee let's move on the soft dorsiflexor bumper if your so dorsiflexor bumper is soft then what happens in this condition it is uh, also minimize the distance of the body so the distance that the body must move forward before the anterior support is lost as we have seen earlier when patient is uh, doing this kind of the activity so uh, there is loss of anterior support and uh, to shorter this distance patient will try to flex their knee abruptly and that's why there is premature knee flexion let's see about the delayed knee flexion at the late stance so how would you remember this remember earlier we have seen that bump soft now plant stiff if dorsiflexion bumper is too stiff it will lead to excessive plantar flexion case means keel is too short here keel is too long socket is too far backwardly and that's why patient is having insufficient or delayed knee flexion let's see in this video 
in this video we can see that the socket is aligned too far post uh, backwardly see here too far backwardly that's why patient is feeling delayed knee flexion it is not as good as normal knee flexion let's see how delayed knee flexion occur in late stance phase so when there is a delayed knee flexion here the anterior support is lost so in order to compensate this the knee joint would remain in the extension during the later part of stance phase and patient may complain while uphill walking excessively posterior or backward uh, displacement of the socket will occur so because of this there is hyper extension of your knee and excessive pressure at the patellar tendon area and the posterior distal area so uh, socket is aligned too far uh, backwardly and that's why there is hyper extension of knee and when there is hyper extension of knee it will delay your knee flexion so if there is uh, excessive plantar flexion of the foot because your dorsiflexion bumper is too hard and that's why the dorsiflexion bumper is hard excessive plantar flexion of the foot and uh, socket is aligned uh, posteriorly there will be delayed knee flexion because uh, the knee uh, your ankle will go for ankle, plantar flexion and that's why patient is having delayed knee flexion thanks friends for, for watching my videos and don't forget to subscribe lastly i want to thanks my friend priyanka she made mnemonics for the all prosthetic gait deviation 